Hello everyone, I'm back, your movie guru, with another review. And this time I'm going to be reviewing none other than this film that I couldn't stop hearing about for quite some time and probably you haven't either, Dune. Now, I'm gonna set the preface straight right now. Uh, I think I have a pretty bit of a controversial take for this one. And I think that I speak for the casual movie goer when I say, I just didn't think it was that good. And I'll get into why. Uh, so first off, when I say I speak for the casual moviegoer, this is something that you will have probably seen a lot of fanfare about. You've heard a lot of hype about. It's the next Star Wars. Uh, it's the next Lord of the Rings, you know, that type of thing. And so you come into this movie and you've got high expectations. And then also, as far as the casual moviegoer, and I think I fit the bill in, Unless you're a fan of the series and you've read the books, um, this is going to be one of the first times you've ever heard of this. Uh, so there was a, a previous film in the 1980s, and then uh, obviously they were, uh, it was based off the books, and there was a TV show about it. But, you know, those were a long time ago. I don't know anything about them uh, other than what I keep hearing is that Dune was a very popular sci-fi book uh, and that it's, you know, it was one of the big ones, you know, very important in terms of uh, the scope and the impact that it had in sci-fi. Um, but, you know, I haven't read any of those. I haven't seen the TV show. I haven't seen the 1980s film. And looking at other critics' reviews and if you talk to the people that are fans of Dune's, this is a movie that you're supposed to like. So it's got an 82% score on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, positive score by the critics, 91% by the audience with over 2,500 reviews. Um, but it is something that is very large and it is too dense to break into a movie format. Um, so for those of you who don't know anything about it, uh, the basic plot of it is this person is set to rule um, this new planet. Um, so you, you gotta think about, you know, there's um, an emperor and he's got these houses under him and each of these houses have their own leader. And there's this one planet that has this very valuable resource and one of the houses were in control of it and they treated the native inhabitants of this planet like slaves. Uh, and then, you know, they had a lot of battles with the inhabitants of the planet over this resource. And so they're taken off of it and it's given to this new house to, you know, go and see if they can have better success. Um, because this, thing, this, this resource that they're mining is called Spice. It's so valuable. Um, obviously, that the house that is left that's kicked off of it, they're not happy about it, and so it causes all this tension. Um, that's just the, the basics of what I was able to get from watching the film. Um, it's directed by, and I'm going to butcher this, but um, Denis Villeneuve, and you'll recognize this director from films such as Arrival, uh, and Blade Runner, among others, and there are things this film gets really right, and but I couldn't get past that aspect of it. So the visuals and the scope of it, when you're watching it, you're going to see that, you know, wow, this is very masterfully done. Uh, you can tell that you know, every shot you see, it's crisp, it's clear. You're able to see the scale of things because um, you, you can tell that the, the, the cinematography is, is expertly done because every time you see something, it's, you're able to see the scale of it. So it's not just like um, you see a giant or you see this big spaceship or you see these people, but you see them in the backdrop of something else. So you get a 
you know, you're, you're able to see the scale of what's going on. Um, and, you know, so the visuals are great. You know, I, I get that. Hans Zimmer uh, does the score, does a great job with that. Uh, it's superbly acted. Uh, there's so many <laughs> big stars in this one, you, you know, that you can't even hardly get them out. So you got Jason Momoa, you've got uh, Zendaya, um, Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson. Um, they all do really good jobs in acting and, and bringing you into this character. Now, the, the film is... Uh, mostly focused on Timothy Chalamet and Rebecca Ferguson, but you know Josh Brolin and Jason Momoa uh, and the others—they do a good job of you know bringing in characters that 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 have a, a a purpose. You know, they're not just filling characters. They they definitely do help to flesh out the scenes and and you know what's going on. And then on top of that, so you you've got the visuals are great. The acting is great. And then what I keep saying, it, it, it takes great villains to make a film. And Stellan Skarsgård does, every time he's on scene, um, you know, you're kind of creeped out by this guy. But you want to find out more about him. Uh, so even though it, 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 it's creeping out and, and you know, he's, he's got this kind of presence uh, you know, anytime he's on the screen, you're focusing on him and, and what he's doing and you're wondering what he's thinking, what he's going to do next. Um, so, so far, great villain. So you're looking at, so how could you not like this movie? Um, I was watching another reviewer and they described it as Games of Thrones in space. And as someone who has not, you know, seen the TV series or read the books, just from watching the film, you could kind of get that. So I, I, I think the director does an a admirable job of detailing uh, and explaining what he can, um, given the limited time. But, you know, some, some look at that as a great triumph, that, the, that he's able to um, relate as much as he can, given the, the limited time frame. But... I go back to that that uh, explanation, Game of Thrones in space. So imagine if you had to condense seven seasons of material and I believe it was the runtime was two hours and 36 minutes. Um, it, it's not possible. Even when I was watching the film, I could tell, you know, even, you know, I, I'm looking at the breathtaking imagery. I, I'm loving the acting. I'm loving the villain. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I can tell that this story is just a, a, a very small part of, you know, what they're trying to relate to you. It, it's so much richer. It's so much deeper. And it, it makes me, the, the, the whole movie, I was wondering, okay, I'm really wondering more about the politics of this. And, you know... Th it needs a lot more backstory than what's given. So they, they do a, you know, a good job of the cliff notes to just try to give you a movie you can understand, but it's, you're still left wanting much more than what the film provides. Uh, added to that, that it's very obviously, uh, even when the movie starts, it says Dune Part One. Um, so the director wanted to make it somewhat complete just because it was known that, you know, if, if this film bombs at the box office, that they're not going to be able to do part two. So he wanted to make it somewhat complete. Um, and he does somewhat of a good job at that. But when it ends, it, it the, the film is very obvious that it is not finished, that there is much more left to be told. Uh, so imagine, you know, Lord of the Rings and... The, the, the first movie and they're like, okay, well, we, we had to end it in, you know, in a, a certain path because we don't know if that, you know, that the next films haven't been green lighted. And, and so when it ends, it just ends in a place where you have to understand that, 
you know, yeah, Frodo's going to make it and, and, and throw the ring uh, into the fire. You know, like, <laughs> to me, to, to even make this and, and, and the second one uh, isn't already in production or isn't greenlit, um, the, the film feels very much incomplete at the end. And, you know, I understand that it's much more movie than can be told, um, you know, in a single film. But, you know, given that, it, it to me, it I, I don't want to live in a world where we don't get the second one. So I, I give them props for that. They definitely made it interesting enough where you want to know more. You're invested, uh, especially by uh, films in. It's a slow burn and you absolutely want to see what happens next. So if Dune makes enough money and, and Dune Part 2, I'm going to be the first in line to see what happens next. And I think a lot of other people are too. But that said, seeing uh, the next act uh, finally being fulfilled, um, you can still see that there's going to be a lot left out from this film. Uh, and because of that reason, I'm only giving this one a 6 out of 10. Uh, I can already see the, uh, a lot of Dune fanboys and uh, critics berating me for this score because this is a film that you're supposed to love. They, they, it feels like they, they want you to love. Um, and because it's it, it's done about as well as, as you know anyone else could have done it, you know, fine. Uh, I understand it. I can take the heat. Uh, but six out of ten, I, I'm very much hoping that you know I'll be able to see a part two. Um, but uh, the, the the closest thing that I can compare this to in terms of part one and part two is um, it. But it, I thought, did it very a uh, whole lot better. The way it ended, if you didn't get a part two, it did feel like complete. You know, you, you saw a, a whole first film. You know, you, you saw the first act, second act, third act. Okay, it's done. Part two, you know, was necessary for the completion of the story. But the, the first film was its own package. They tried to do this with this film and not as much success. Uh, it, it still leaves you feeling like, okay, just when the action is about to start, you know, when you think about any story arc of where you've got the hero and then they encounter uh, some trouble and then they, they've got to, to build their way up to power and, and then challenge, you know, and, and restore and make things right and then some things might go wrong. And, you know, we are right in, in the valley of the, the heroes in despair uh, and then they're, they're, they're climbing the hill back up to, you know, to go and make things right. And, and that's where the, the film leaves off. Um, so six out of 10, only because not saying that the director didn't do a good job as well as I think anyone could have done it. But I think the film... Or, or this is something that, and I, and I think an, another critic said this, I would have loved to see this as, you know, a, a, a HBO Max series that, where this is, you know, like a Game of Thrones, where Dune, we've got seasons of it, where we're seeing, you're able to see all the different houses, you, you're seeing what's happened with the Emperor, you're seeing what's, you know, all this political intrigue behind the scenes, uh, you're seeing the action and... All of it fits into a, a, a very uh, well done, very entertaining story. But uh, once again, six out of ten. You know, I, I may. You know, this is something that that Kiss Three might make me coming back and change if I really enjoy the second one and um, you know the the motion dies down and I, I can come back and, and look at it again and appreciate. Um, just what the film does right, you know, I, I might come back and change it. But for now, 6 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> write me a comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I can definitely see a lot of people disagreeing me with this one. A lot of people disagree on Rotten Tomatoes. But, hey, change my mind. You know, we can talk about it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, I'm happy you enjoyed it. I would recommend you go see it in theaters. Uh, if nothing else, I very much like the ambition uh, of this project. That, that someone... 
looked at it and, and took a chance on saying, hey, I think that I can bring this vision to light. And I really like seeing that in cinema where you can take chances and, you know, win or lose. Sometimes you're going to strike out, but sometimes you're going to hit it big and be able to accomplish things that, you know, no one ever has done before in film. Uh, and then we're all better off for it. Uh, so see this one in theaters. Uh, go out and support a film like this. Uh, I, I do think that you you will be at least entertained by film. You will be invested by films in for sure. Uh, and you are entertained throughout. So that's all for this one. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I will see you all next time.